Hello and welcome to Seabase uh, Late Night. Uh, it's uh, almost uh, almost eleven. Um, and uh, my name is Uk. I'm the communications officer here at Seabase. And if you've watched the um, uh, far plan uh, closely, you might have noticed that uh, someone else should have been in my place today. So uh, Dimitri Kleiner should have been here. Um, he became ill a few days ago and couldn't be here, so I'm uh, standing in for him right now. Dimitri, if you're watching this, get well soon. Um, today's topic here at Seabase Late Night is device control as a fetish. And my guest today is a real-life virtual tech dom. Please welcome with me uh, the queen of device and phone control, goddess Anissa. Thank you for being here with us. This is your uh, first public appearance, as I hear. Um, yeah, thanks for being with us uh, here at Seaways Late Night. Thanks for having me. So, uh, I'm thinking uh, the question that most people have out there is, uh, what does a tech dom do, actually? I was wondering if the name explains itself a bit. Basically, I dominate men through their devices. I mean, the... The profession of a dominatrix is not new. Device control is a quite new fetish. I say it developed, it started in California in 2013. And yeah, so basically I get paid for breaking into devices as computers, phones, home networks, social media accounts even. Mm. Basically the the more the technology develops, the more opportunities are for tech kinky play. Yeah, can you like can you <clears throat> tell us a bit what typical things uh, uh, you, you do to your subs? Uh, it's really hard to say what's typical because the variety is endless. And I was, I'm, you know, whenever I think it's starting to repeat, there's something new coming. But there are some, even within, I mean, it's a super niche fetish we are talking about, but even within that super, super niche niche are some trends, such as TeamViewer, for example. So some people get aroused when they even hear or read the word TeamViewer because they are thinking of tech domination. Or when they don't know much about it and they're looking for it on the internet, they are not looking in, at Google, but they will search on Twitter and... Um, they will search for team viewer, device control, tech dominatrix. And I often ask myself, or maybe I should ask team viewer directly if they are aware of their fame in yeah. certain target groups. So the, can you like like can you walk us through <laughs> like some of the things that you do during a session? Like maybe like talking from like a beginner perspective, so for someone someone who first contacts you. Uh, online, so people come to you online and ask you to do these things to you. So, what do you usually like do? Right. I like, mean, the very first thing that I do is talk about what they like about their experience level, what they want to experience. Very important, what their personal boundaries are. I'm very suspicious of people who say they don't have boundaries. That tells me they're actually beginners. And then I still try to find it out. So basically, we do a setting uh, for 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 a play. Then I um, because um, I want the person, of course, to I want to have a very clear chat that the person has consented. And in my and after the person has paid for this for this to happen, mm. um, then we do what we agreed on basically. And I mean, sometimes, of course, it might lead to. The person's really enjoying it, and we are going to continue it and do more stuff. Like, can, can you go into a little bit of the details? What are you yes, doing exactly? I'm sorry. Like, yeah. what, like what exactly. Is the, so, I the mean, things you're doing. On, right. Yeah. Sorry. You're, you're yeah. not. You're not sitting on someone's computer. You're no, connecting no, no. to I'm them sitting, to the internet. I'm sitting. I'm sitting at yeah. my. I'm sitting at my. At my. At my room. Uh, someone is interested in having a team viewer session. Yeah. That implies that the person has a team view or, or any desk on their computer and I have that as well and the first step would be that we that we connect and that is already a moment of excitement there is someone as you can imagine <laughs> there is someone else on my computer which to most people is super frightening uh, for some people it's exciting my clients 
and then you go like you go through the browser history or um, you <clears throat> go yeah. look yeah, into like I mean, their secret folders. So. Yeah, th um, that really depends on what we uh, um, what we talked about as preparation, like. Um, When they say, "Oh, do you uh, are you going to snoop around?" and then, "Yes, I'm going to snoop around," and then um, there are probably folders hidden in the computer, but they're hidden in an obvious way with photos they might find. I don't find hard. I find hardly anything embarrassing, but it's photos that are supposed to be embarrassing that I'm going to find and comment in a way like, "Oh, look what I found there." So yeah, so it takes screenshots. You. I, I do you lock people you lock people out of your their computer uh, if they if that's what they ask for they're going to get okay. that I mean for example some after you've gone I mean if you like one thing you always want to go to the next level so on team viewer I might set myself my own password go to the advanced option and change the settings which still can be undone if They are still the admins, so I better make myself admin on the computer, make them standard user. Then they can't do the team viewer. Um, then they can't change the team viewer se settings anymore. And from there on, I have access to their computer at any time I want. Which again, most like 99.9% of the people find scary. Some people find it super hot. And um, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> uh, like, do, do you think it, your 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 uh, your subs like feel like their devices are some kind of like part of their body, like intimate part of their? I I was body? asking myself that question a lot because I mean I certainly enjoy what I'm doing. I think it's a great job, but I always you know I thought is this how how do they get pleasure from something that happens to their computer? I could. I was like, okay, people obviously merge with their devices. I mean, many people have a very attached feeling towards their phone, and when they have misplaced it or they know they forgot it somewhere, they experience phantom pain. So it kind of makes sense to my understanding that it might also be connected with arousal. Okay, and and do you feel <clears throat> like you are transgressive to these people? Um, I not. I don't feel transgressive towards these people at all like i would if if this would be done to a partner kids employees i would find that super transgressive mm -hmm. because it's going to be used um not on it's i mean like when an employer uses it on their employee it's not really consensual mm -hmm. because what can the employee say you know i don't i don't want it i take another job you know you're in a bad situation so i find these apps Like when they are used in other contents, then I am using them. I find it transgressive, but mm. I don't find transgressive what I do because I do consensual play amongst adults. Yeah, and how do you make sure everything is actually consensual? Like, how do you how do you make absolutely sure that it's it's, it's always the same? It's communication. Communication is key, and um, sometimes uh, I mean we either communicate through chat. Some even prefer to. Uh, to see me on Skype while doing that. So I basically, I, tr I always say, okay, the next step is going to be this. I'm going to do that. Are you fine with that? They might ask questions. And that is also from what I know. I mean, there are some subs that have been, been with me since I started this. And this is exactly what they really appreciate and value. That I tell them what's going to happen. And it's exactly what's going to happen that is important. So yeah. For, so, or like, it's, you know, it's only my mm -hmm. personal... So you, you charge them. There's a contract in this case. But there is yes. no, but like, but I mean, like there is of course no written contract because, you know, the guy gets online at night. He has the idea it might be something to try out. So the contract is the chat, mm -hmm. <laughs> where you say, you know, we, let's do this and that, yeah. and it will cost you this and that. They pay, and then you fulfill your part of. I fulfill, but like I will basically do as promised. And yeah. Okay, let's take take a step back and look at how how you became what you are today. Um, so, did you have any previous involvement in in things like BDSM at all? Um, well, I'm definitely not an active member of the very versatile Berlin BDSM community. But I mean, I grew up in Berlin, been living here for decades, 
And the city has always been very kink friendly, and some people from abroad even call it capital of kinks. And also, when they hear about my job, they're like, oh, this is only possible in Berlin. I think the nice thing about my job is you can do it anywhere. That's so great about it. Um, but I mean, Berlin gives me definitely a very open minded surrounding, so that mm. does feel great. Uh, when going out, like, late 90s and stuff, the kink scene was also super present present, and um, there were well, it was more like a playful context, but I would say there is um, BDSM relationships that go far beyond the typical cliches what people think, you know, like when people hear BDSM they think of shiny <laughs> shiny <laughs> Uh, shiny rubber, rubber and leather stuff, and people beating each other up. But I think it's also it's also a lot about communication, relationship structures, even tech domination. So I think there's a lot um, there's a lot of a lot of other aspects that are involved in BDSM than the very obvious. Yeah. What you see. So. And like from this point, how how did you get into this line of work? Like what I do now. Yeah. yeah. So, it, it really doesn't have, it do, I mean, it does have a bit to do with my background because that, but the background of Berlin brought me that openness for sure because you need to be open to do it. Otherwise, you know, if you have like, if it would collide with moral standards, it would become difficult. But I ca actually have a different background of work. I have originally a creative job that I still do and really enjoy doing. Been, I've been working freelance for 20 years and everybody who's done freelance work in Berlin, most people I know, they had they went through ups and downs. Like, let's say you have major clients that don't pay or let, let you hang dry for a few weeks. Then it can get, it just can get really awful. And there was that moment, or that, not just the moment, but there were these moments where eBay client Anzeigen, that's like classified ads or like Craigslist, saved my life because I have a studio and there was always stuff to sell. And the thing is, every woman knows it. Like when you put shoes, any piece of garment, textile, even an exercise ball on classified ads, some guy is going to text you and say, oh, can you take a picture of you wearing the shoes, sitting on that exercise ball? And I was always like, oh, no, Pav, leave me alone. I'm not going to take your pictures. And at that point in life where I was super broke and someone on eBay, Klein Anzeigen, was actually offering me money for taking a picture of me in old shoes, I was like, okay, how much, and we couldn't agree on the price, but the conversation kept my mind. I was like, wow, there are people that are really desperate for photos of used shoes and sitting on exercise balls. And I, I thought, the community of these people must be bigger than the community of eBay Kleinanzeigen people. And um, I, I started to look in the internet, and I found many, many platforms. <laughs> And I thought, you know, okay, you know, I will subsidize my lifestyle by selling used items. But uh, that was only a very small aspect, actually, because what I realized very early on is it, it was not about the used item. It was about the communication uh, and the time spent with a person. Like, no one on the internet buys an item without having, getting, like, an idea of, of so... I learned that pretty quick, and then I discovered a marvelous universe of fancy kinks like, uh, that I was like really excited to explore. For example, giantess fetish. Has everyone ever heard about that? Giant, I certainly haven't. Giantess fetish, <laughs> giantess fetish is one of the... that in this, like Three years ago, it was one of the fastest growing um, niche fetishes on Pornhub. It's basically the women is overdimensional and the the guy is like pretty tiny so they call themselves tinies the ladies are con considered giants and what, what's, what, what I found really mind-boggling is it's not a fetish that you can live in real life it's only an imaginary yeah, it's, it's not it's not a, 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 it's, a, a, it's, a big yeah. woman with a very small man no, no, in a, no, in exactly. a video it's, like, it's yeah, and, it's a Photoshop of a it's very, a photo, very exactly. tiny. For example, yeah, okay. when I had photos of uh, when I had photos on my Twitter, and there was like a giantess fetishist. Uh, inter interestingly, many of these people ha they work in computer graphics. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of makes sense because they do the they send you like a nice collage they made. 
So when you, when I put a photo on and they would send me in return because they like the photo, a collage where my feet look super huge and I'm stomping their hometown. No, like the, for, that would just okay. be one example. And some people find that exciting. <laughs> Okay, and then then you dug deeper uh, into the internet, and uh, th is there is there like learning material that you could? I was I was really ex I, yeah. I mean I I mean um, I was really looking for people to talk about it. I mean, of course, my friends love to hear my stories, but it was really hard to get like professional advice. And I thought, well, I'm probably not the only woman on the internet doing that. And I was searching uh, YouTube and. And I came across a personality that I found super inspiring. I know that many of her videos are controversial, <laughs> to say to say the least. But uh, especially her early videos where she mm. explains um, every fetish, like uh, where it comes from, and if you are an online dominatrix, how to like how to uh, how to deal with it, basically. So yeah. she she did a lot of how-to material. And Corona just started. I was staying at home and like doing night classes, you know, like every evening I was going through the videos. So YouTube University. And yeah, maybe we I did. Can, maybe I, we can I, show I a screenshot of, to, uh, of, of the <laughs> YouTube Revenge channel. That, yeah, yeah you, you were talking about earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe we can show this on the screen. Um, so you, you sent me this uh, yesterday and I watched like one or two videos and like it's really hard to, you like, You will probably be very offended. I think it's her personality. You will be really, really offended by what she's saying. <laughs> Just as a, if you if you want to get into this, it, uh, yeah. Um, and then you learned about this, and like, which also, I mean, she also did. She does really good advice for how to organize yourself mm -hmm. when you get into the kind of field of work. Uh, she. Uh, she tells you how to tell good subs mm -hmm. away from bad subs, how to recognize abusive behavior in communication very on and so on. She gives really good examples and tells you how to deal with it. And that really helped me in the beginning because, I mean, I'm pretty confident about what I do now, but I certainly wasn't two years ago. It was try yeah. and error a lot. And it was still before the pandemic? And did the pandemic uh, have an impact on, no, on your... No, it totally... I mean, the, the, the pandemic on me had a very positive impact because um, because the world calmed down. There was... I really enjoyed the calming down effect. I had just discovered a new interest that I, where I wanted to spend a lot of... Uh, But I just wanted to give a lot of attention. And also, I had already started in the fetish world. The business started growing because, you know, people were sitting at home <laughs> and <laughs> looking for online things to do. And then also, in that time, I came across that field of tech domination. I was, I was, in, I was amazed. I was like, wow, that's like incredible. And that's like so was like science fiction and I decided I wanted to do it even though I had like literally no tech background <laughs> and um, I told also one friend she could hardly be believe that I wanted to do that but I mean in the beginning the subs they really since they, there is hardly um, the demand is so much so much higher than the supply basically the subs who, mm. kind, who have that kind of fetish they are absolutely willing to help so um so I just, you know, started learning by doing and got better at better at it over the time. Yeah. Um, so, what parts of the world do your subs come from? Um. But yeah, I mean, I think to answer that question is best to visualize to visualize it. And I have a homework and research sub who prepared a map for me that we could maybe yeah. maybe thank we you can show, show it. on screen. So basically, where you have the bigger, bu bigger red bubbles, you have a higher density, and so on. So you notice that there is like a center in like Central Europe now in Germany. In the beginning, it wa was more in the U.S., like Austin, Texas, where it's a big tech scene, but also New York and California, but also Co Colorado and Missouri, some in Canada, even um, Australia, Taiwan, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. 
neighboring countries in EU. So it's pretty international. <laughs> And what kinds of like uh, backgrounds and like, what is what's what's like the age of yours? It's it's a like huge it's, it's a huge it's a huge age group. It's mm -hmm. the, I'd say it starts in the early twenties mm -hmm. and it goes up to like mid sixties. Uh, so yep. Yeah, mid sixties. What kind of of backgrounds? All kind of backgrounds. I mean, some in the twenties are students, others there are some that are truck drivers. Others work in medicine. There's and retired, reti retired um, state officials, people who even people who work in cybersecurity are amongst my sub community. It's very <laughs> versatile. Yeah, yeah. It's th that that is one of the things that surprised me a lot that there are people out there like work in cybersecurity and th in their daytime they work at preventing all these things and then for fun yeah, but, they like. But I think, to, to I th but I think, I think this is how fetishes develop. Actually, yeah. right? The bigger the taboo, the the higher the desire. I, you know, that would be pretty cliche psychology, but I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now let's get into the uh, the details, the technical details, uh, which probably right. most of our audience is uh, very interested in. Uh, is what kind of software? Uh, do you use uh, and what's your, your experience? With that? Um, I mean, I mainly use the software that is maybe not the best option, but that is most well known amongst the subs. Like TeamViewer already has a cult status in that mm -hmm. scene. I person there's also AnyDesk, which I um, prefer over yeah. TeamViewer. So I use these softwares as remote control to connect to phone or computer. And once they're the next. The next step might be, depending what they agreed on, um, a parental control. There are different, there are a lot of different ones, like Studio and Saalfeld is the kids' mm -hmm. logs, and Saalfeld is the one that I personally like because with one account you can um, control two devices, which would mean, for example, if Sub has phone and computer, You could control, <laughs> you could control phone and computer and split the screen time and so on. Yeah. What I also, I mean, some are also that a recent trend, which was which wasn't that massive of a trend when I started, is um, keyloggers are becoming popular. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh God, is do you install keyloggers? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and um, of yeah, of course. I mean, when agreed on it, yeah. I do install keyloggers as well. Yeah, and when we talked before, you also told me about like uh, software that actually give you get, like frightened you. Yeah, exactly. Um, because um, I, I thought, okay, I work in that field. I have to keep up with technologies, and I'm always looking on Twitter what other ladies do, and some are very inspiring. And then I notice, oh my god, there's like a new user spy software out that looked really scary. That's It's a group that are either called M-Spy or FlexiSpy. Hmm. And they, I mean, they can be bought in app stores. And I was very surprised to see how far they go. I think it must be like the Pegasus software, but only for users as a market version. Because basically, when you install it on the phone, You have total surveillance. You can record any surrounding noise. You can use the back and the front camera. You can listen to every phone call and you can read all the text. So um, um, I read, oh my, I was, oh wow, you know, that goes very far. I posted on Twitter that I'm looking for a guinea pig for something new. That, and of course, there was a line of people queuing up who wanted to do it immediately. And um, I think if people want to play with that kind of stuff, okay. But what frightens me is that this kind of software is targeted targeted at parents and employers. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's certainly you don't something no. I, I wouldn't <laughs> want to do. No, uh, absolutely, as a parent, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, if you have any questions, um, you can uh, uh, ask us questions uh, using IRC. Uh, maybe we can uh, show the um, uh, the 
the addresses here. Uh, so you can ask us questions uh, using um, the channel rc3-cbase on uh, hackint, and, and also you can use the hashtag rc3cbase on Twitter or Mastodon, and our signal angels will uh, relay those messages uh, or your questions to uh, to us uh, if you have any yeah more questions. Uh, we, we'll we'll get to the, those later. Um, and uh, by the way, have you tried any uh, free or open source software? Uh, um, in your field? I would be totally open to it, but um, I have been like in preparation for this talk. I was looking at how many computers I've been on, and it was like a bit more than four hundred. And just two of these I remember were Linux computers. So for some reason, the Linux computer isn't uh, the Linux community is not that much into that fetish. But <laughs> surprise! But uh, I even but I had to I had to uh, I had to I had two users with Linux computers and I found them a free open source control which is called Gnome Nanny Gnome Nanny it was. Yeah. So if there is free software and there uh, and there's a sub with a Linux computer, I'm absolutely open for using yeah. it. But so also, do you uh, use any kind of like specialized hardware? Oh, oh there... yes. I mean, <laughs> um, specialized hardware. Um, I mean, when, I'm just thinking about like when you call an item hardware because inter I mean, interesting it is <laughs> when you look at the fetishes that are related to device control, right? Mm -hmm. The, there is a chastity fetish. I don't know if anyone has ever heard about it. Chastity means basically putting your dick in a cage. Google or DuckDuckGo uh, chastity yeah. cage and marvel at the variety of items which are made either of plastic or steel. And like in the old-fashioned way would be that you put it on, take the key, you might mail it to my post box, but you might also meet a mistress and give it to her in person. And then you decide to live in chastity for I don't know how long. You know, beginners people find it hard. Some people find it hard for eight hours. Some people live in chastity for months. And of course, sometimes the doms are far away. And wouldn't it make sense to have a to have a, a yeah. remote remote control chastity cage? So a few years ago, there was development of um, of a device called Cellmate. So Cellmate is like um it's like a cage that can be controlled via app. Mm -hmm. And people wouldn't have heard about it if the um Cellmate didn't get hacked. So there were people wearing that the chastity device. And yeah. Yeah, and uh it, it got hacked and they got basically blackmailed. Uh, not only they were in that awkward situation of being in that cage, they also got hacked. And uh, and hackers blackmailed them, and it was it it was quite a big thing in the news. And because um, obviously the support of the company wasn't um, available for a, for yeah. for a certain amount of time, and yeah, as you can a, imagine, that frightened it frightened people out. We have a <laughs> screenshot of an article describing this uh, device so, uh, here. Maybe we can show this. Um. I'm also hearing uh, that there, we have some some technical difficulties. Maybe um, is is the stream working? Ah, that. okay. So uh, yeah, so this is this is one of the device. Yeah, and, that is uh, exactly ironically, that is cellmate that we're yeah. talking about. It, I mean, it looks very technical. Probably from just looking at it, it's really hard to figure what it's about. But yeah, it's it's like a cage. Um. Yeah. Uh, yep. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Big word of kings. Um, you also you also uh, order cameras for people, right? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, we didn't talk about the opportunities of home surveillance yet. I mean, some people are like when you start with device controlling, they might they might want to expand the fetters and um, and then you know. I normally I choose and order them cameras, like one or two per room, and then they put them up in their room, and then I make them buy a safe, and which of course is remotely controlled via app, and then I make them put the car keys in the remotely 
controlled safe, so they can only use their car by permission. And also, like when I have when I have access to the home network, I change the TV program if I don't like it. I <laughs> put on the music that I want. Tell the sub not to sleep in his bed, and rather on the floor or pick up the dirty socks. So basically. <clears throat> what you do is you give... I mean, obviously, people, instead of being controlled or surveilled by anonymous power, they rather prefer a person doing so, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Just a thought, right. you know? <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, I think I think we're done with the, with the questions <laughs> that we have prepared. And... Uh, um, maybe we we start getting uh, we start getting uh, uh, questions um, from from the internet. Um, but just uh, one one question that that just came to mind is: um, Do do like do your like your clients? Do you do most like do the most of them like ever see your face? Is, is everything over chat or? Do you, uh, do you talk to them it, or do it, you... It depends on um, the level. I mean, for a team viewer, they don't need to see my face. Yeah. But some, some, I mean, some, for example, are have a foot fetish. And instead of seeing face, they like to see feet while doing mm -hmm. team viewer. But it's all, it is, um, it is possible. But I would normally do that with someone that, I get, you know, like normally the first one or two sessions, I wouldn't, I would just do VR chat and then yeah. see how things evolve. Okay. So I'm getting the first questions here. Um, yeah. Um, we touched on this like in the beginning just a little bit, but uh, the question is, did you have any legal issues uh, do, doing this? Um, what what ways do you do, what, what, what ways... Um, do you protect against legal issues and uh, yeah. is there a record that you keep? Like um, I know that I could be better at uh, keeping records and thank you for reminding that I need to improve on that but of course I mean I do have the chats where um, where I where we you know it's like a list of what we are going to do and what the person is paying for which is like basically a contract only that a chat is not really a contract but nevertheless it's there but um in the beginning when i started i was worried about that a lot i was like oh my god and because it did happen it did happen that i upset people and they yeah. got angry and then i thought well what are they going to do they go to their local police officer and tell them you know some internet dominatrix which which would mean that they talk openly about their weirdest kings that no one, um, which is to most people hard to mm. understand. So I just figured, you know, well, relax about it because it's very unlikely. It's just very unlikely. Yeah. And I mean, luckily, I've been living in Berlin all my life. And if I probably need legal help, I would somehow get yeah. it. So. I'm not. I stopped. I, I had that. I had these concerns, these thoughts a lot in the beginning. But I thought the one thing is, it's more important for me to learn communication strategies, like what to do if someone is really annoyed. You know, mm. to like wait until that moment is over, yeah. find out what's behind it, and so on. So it, because basically, it's more about like learning de-escalation techniques. Yeah. There's also like the question about clients' uh, uh, work machines. Um, that might have access to like uh, business secrets, trade secrets. Yeah, so. I mean, um, from what I what I saw, it was the private computers, and I mean, I would say that I do have access sometimes to information that I shouldn't have, but I simply don't touch it. <laughs> so because. Because it's just not part of it, right? And I think um, if someone wants a computer takeover and he uses mm. the machine for work, I mean, yeah, like what can he? I mean, you know, like I think when I see that that there is work files, um, I will definitely mention it and say, you know, are you sure about this? And how should we deal with it? And but people who have super sensitive work, they have definitely uh, more than one computer at home, and they use one for play and one for work. Yeah. 
Yeah. Definitely, I think good hygiene to yeah, do. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. Uh, if you if you yeah. if you if you're into this, um, yeah. Um, uh, there's a question here about like uh, issues that having access to data that involves like third parties. So I don't know what if what if yourselves have a family and you record their family on the cameras and uh, things like that. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I mean, how would I record the family on the camera? I would, you know. Oh, you mean no? You mean, yeah, you no, install but, like uh, a, you, uh, you no, buy no, a no. camera. No, no, no. But I mean, the thing is with the ca I I get it. But the thing is, the people. Um, what I noticed from my experience, the people who do that with the cameras are definitely subs that live on their own. Mm -hmm. So it's never. I've never had the case with third party involved, and I would definitely find that personally a no-go yeah. un unless the whole family agreed which if, even yeah. if they yeah. couldn't yeah. If they, so it was ne a situation that never happened but thank you for raising awareness <laughs> in, yeah. case, in case uh, I see a family okay. so yeah uh, there, there are more like questions about like your uh, types of uh, types of, of subs and types of customers and um Yeah, your your customer uh, are your customers mainly nerds or hacker or are they usually more casual everyday tech I, workers? I think my subs are of course there is I don't I wouldn't say there's hardly I mean nerds like when when does someone start being a nerd? I know there's like one is a PhD student in mathematics is that is he already a nerd? He's definitely super smart. And I must say that I enjoy the smart subs more than the less the less smarter ones. <laughs> but um, but we we've talked about this before. Uh, there's there's truck drivers. But there's truck drivers yeah. also, and truck drivers, by the way, can also be pretty smart and funny. And so yeah. And also, uh, there's a question about like uh, what's the the operating uh, OS preference. Um, I think we've touched on that quite a lot. It's ma mainly Windows computers. It's Team viewer on Windows. Yes, or yes, yes. Similar it's, yeah, software. It's, yeah. it's, um, it's mainly Windows. Yeah. Um, have you ever? Uh, uh, did you ever get fooled um, that you like someone uh, didn't sure. give you access to like the real machine, but like no, a virtual machine? No, 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 machine? no, no, no. What actually happens is like when you. I mean, maybe some females watch it, and they're like, "That sounds pretty cool." That's something I all. Because I'm sure there are many women out there who have way more tech knowledge already, so mm. go for it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, the problem in the when you start out is that people try to get you on the computer for free. Yeah. Like, they don't want you to pay for it. So the biggest, the important, the very important technique is uh, make the deal before you actually connect. Because just, I mean, some guys also get off on on cheating on you. So basically okay. when they manage to get you on the computer and they didn't pay, they're already excited enough. So that is so definitely... The, it's the one definitely the about that getting, a, the, getting the, like making sure that you're getting paid. Absolutely. And, I mean, because and, people try to trick you to yeah. like, to like, they try to manipulate you in every possible way to, mm -hmm. to get, not everyone, but you know, some do. And the longer, the longer you are out there, The, the the people start to like when they see that the person is established, the the people who fool you, um, they they are after, they are after the beginners. So in the beginning you put up with these, and when you learn the techniques how to separate the good yeah. ones from that, then it kind of works. But it takes time, and then you learn it. Mm. Um, so here's a little bit more uh, about the the technical challenges. Um, uh, did you ever have to do some like actual hacking? Uh, when does actual like, hacking start? I mean, like the guy from. I mean, the, the, yeah. if the guy gives you the password to his computer on, uh, uh, or for for his remote control software, I wouldn't say that would be hacking. No, but I nobody agree, nobody yeah. wanted ever wanted you to actually like hack into their computers like uh, on. I on mean, like I, a, the thing is, the thing is, like if I had the skills, they'd love it, you know. So, yeah. so basically. Um, Yeah, so that would definitely be worth learning okay. <laughs> because they'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you have, if no, you have no, the I'm skills totally, I'm to, to yeah, hack yeah, no, into I'm, other I'm, people's yeah, yeah. computers, yeah, then. no, like uh, as yeah. exactly in my profession, it would. So I mean, I do. I mean, the good thing is that when you do it through the remote control, the like way, then you kind of, in case of legal trouble, yeah. you have that agreement process. But actually, 
Yeah. The subs would find it super hard. Uh, so did anyone ever ask you to uh, damage uh, their technology in a way that it couldn't be uh, recovered? Well, yeah, the thing is, I mean, is when somebody asks me to install Keylogger, what is he asking for? You know, you can take the damage pretty far. And... Yeah, but I think the question is more about, like, actually breaking things. Did someone ever, like, ever ask ever, me that? Like, like to... Can you? But the thing is, I mean, people, um, like sometimes you play the limitation games where mm -hmm. you put up the parental control and you reduce the time, but that is still, that is still, I mean, the computer is still running, right? Mm -hmm. So it's more about, you know, like doing the, like making it the net tighter and tighter and more uncomfortable. So, you know, less, yeah. less internet sites that you can use, less, less time you have on your computer and so on. So it's about creating constraint restriction digital bondage so kind of so and then we are again at the question is there a relation from computer and body yeah oh. um did you ever use any smart home devices like uh well uh home cameras we definitely talked about yeah that yeah one. yeah no uh, def uh, and def curtains def heaters uh like oh no i haven't had no. curtains and heaters Mm -hmm. I have no, I haven't had those one yet. But uh, thank you for inspiring questions. I okay. will find. I will <laughs> because whenever I have an idea of what could be done, <laughs> I'm just going to look for you know. But uh, I did. I mean, home network like TV, TV and music, of course. Or sometimes you know, print. I use someone's printer and print out yeah. something that. You know, I like. uh, next next question is pretty <laughs> hilarious. Uh, have you ever considered creating an Alexa skill that allows Alexa to give commands to your user? <laughs> <laughs> Question is awesome, and of course I haven't thought of it, but <laughs> <laughs> you would, yeah. but it's definitely thank, thank, the idea. Thank you the for idea the suggestions. <laughs> yes, uh, awesome question. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so um, here's here's a, here's a question. I I don't know if you want to answer this uh, online. Well, just leave uh, it about, open if I. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's about like payment, how you paid by the hour or by session. Oh, or... I'm, I'm happy to answer that. Yeah. Basically, um, uh, you kind of, uh, per session, you know, and then mm -hmm. I tell the, the thing is I'm not a super techie nerd. So sometimes things take longer than expected or the computer mm -hmm. looks different. And then I, so I make, I normally make a session price, but when I make, I also do, uh, custom videos. And then of course I ch charge But it depends on what I do, basically. Yeah. So there are packages, but there's also minutes for stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Um, do do some clients ask you for some kind of role playing? Sure. Um, yeah, so someone sure, no, someone on the internet is wondering what kind of role play scenarios you could do this with this setup. I mean, there is just so many role plays. Like, of course, there is like the classical parent kid situation that you play the strict mommy or the teachers and often the fetishes is combined with people have like tasks. I mean, I have uh, research and work subs because many subs are into tasks. They want, it's like, I want something to do in my life. And mm -hmm. since I'm always like, with, I have so much stuff to do always. I'm like, okay, I give you a task, make a map. Or there was some guy in Australia, he was really into long writing task and I was like well, I, I'm not an English teacher I don't feel sufficient to uh, my English is sufficient to actually write it but uh, since he was quite old I made him write uh, uh, four pages about every year he lived in so that was a big writing task so a lot of creativity is necessary to come up with tasks and mm -hmm. yeah uh, next question we actually um, uh, uh, It answered before uh, in the beginning of the ta uh, of the the talk, uh, just uh, to 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 answer that one. Um, how did you come across the fetish? How uh, you, you mentioned it's very niche. Um, yeah, so basically, um, I, you you got you got from like sell. You were broke. You wanted yeah, to sell exactly. stuff on on, e on eBay say, classified. I, 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 <laughs> exactly. You got messages from people, uh, and you and you you yeah. started making money by. Posting uh, your your videos of shoes and uh, yeah, that's where I started. And then the giantess content, uh, yeah. content. Then also like okay, whatever. I was really getting into 
find the nichiest niche and mm -hmm. explore it. Like uh, that yeah. was definitely the aspect that I enjoyed. And when I came across the tech domination, I was just super fascinated and wanted to learn about it. Okay, next question is obviously from like a uh, from 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 an expert here. Um, oh. <laughs> I've got the feeling this fetish is declining. Five years ago, um, lots of people on poppin.de were giving <laughs> access to their systems. Now it's as common. Now it's not as common anymore. Um, can you confirm that it's losing popularity? Uh, no, I can't confirm because since I started, it's growing. And maybe it, like it was the community that he mentioned. Um, maybe they had like a short straw mm -hmm. fire, you know, that, that, that like a sp that there was like a spike. But since I mean, what is happening right now is that the people actually have less human interaction. The families are getting smaller. The the communities that where people interact are very small. Like uh, one child is brought up by a single mother. The single mother works. The people in the internet become more important than real life person. Uh, my the, my that inspiring uh, revenge Persephone, she means the phrase um, para social relationships, which yeah. I think many people have with me because they can they tell me things that they can't tell anyone else. I what I never kink shame anyone for whatever the fantasy is. So I don't see my f I don't see that niche declining at all. I see it growing and um, maybe it's changing, it's adjusting because when the technology evolves, the play will change. But I would say it's steep. Um, yeah. It's going up. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, how is the gender distribution uh, among amongst your, myself? Um, am I, amongst your, yeah, yourself. Uh, well, there are some, well, of course, it's mainly male. There are some um, I had I had some transgender people, like I was um, accompanying them through in their face when they were going. I don't know the proper English term, but basically when you go through that phase of changing, which is quite long. Women are very mm. rare. I had that twice. Yeah, so I would say ninety-eight male, one transgender or other. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I use the wrong terms. Um, yeah, but predominantly male. Pre yeah, yeah like but what also transgender and one percent female predominantly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there any kind of um, online platform where uh, the DOMs share their experiences? Um, Twitter is very important for that, mm -hmm. and. Um, and also, it used to be AVN, but AVN is going stars AVN. They're going to demonetize towards the end of the year, which I find really annoying. So basically, a community where you find many DOMs, they also interact. The first, I was uh, when I was a beginner and I was looking at different rooms and sites. I found it quite interesting to see like the front side, mm -hmm. like the customer side view of like what the DOMs were posting, and then they had like. Dom chat rooms where they were talking about I don't know exchanging recipes and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. So but I mean I do I do I so but basically like with every stuff in the internet you find your crowd. So there are some ladies doms that I find very inspiring. They do amazing work. They do speeches. They do research that they publish and and give good advice. And that is definitely important. Yeah, because in my immediate surrounding I have no colleagues as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think one last question okay. is, uh, what are you doing to protect your customers? Like if you got hacked, um, someone would have, have access to all these, um, the, the, all these lives. Like what is, well, the thing is, I don't, I don't store the information of mm -hmm. the subs. You know, I have access, yeah. but I don't store it. So if someone hacks my computer that I use for for that kind mm -hmm. of scenario, there's hardly anything. I mean, what they would find, what do what would be there? They, I mean, they see a number. Of, they see any desk user numbers, but what does it tell them? Okay. So I, I I'm not sure if I answered the question sufficiently mm -hmm. because I've I haven't thought about it to the full extent. But I I would say, you know, there isn't. 
There is no stuff. There is no personal sub stuff on my computer. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think we're done. Thank, thank you for you. being no, it here. It was super inspiring. Also, the questions yeah, super, from the audience super made me think. And thank you so much. Hey, thank you. <laughs> and yeah. I don't have an idea what the next talk is. Can someone shout what the next talk is on this channel? Yeah. Is that right here? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. You need uh, you need to you need to kneel down before your kneel mistress. Down. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. I will absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for your talk. <laughs> and so um, I will switch to German now because the next talk will be in German as well. Everything is uh, licensed under a CC by 4.0 and it is all for the community. To download for everybody.